Good morning and welcome to Mount Olivet United Methodist Church. This is Sunday, July the 25th and it's the uh, ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Let's start our time together this morning by praying. Gracious God, we thank you this morning for the work you have prepared for us to do and for the strength that you give us to do it. Your blessing for us is revealed most clearly in the work that we do to pass your blessing on to others. We want to be a blessing today. In your name, amen. Our scripture note for this morning, um, the lectionary, which we've talked about a little bit before, the common lectionary that many of the um, many of the Christian churches in the world share um, which gives us a, a reading for each Sunday a gospel lesson an epistle lesson a psalm and an, an Old Testament lesson has moved um, from the Gospel of Mark to the Gospel of John so we're going to skip over to the Gospel of John at this point in the summer um, also another scripture note um, I made a mistake and I don't have the video of uh, Katie Hickey reading our gospel lesson or our epistle lesson this morning so Katie I'm very very sorry I'm gonna have to go ahead and read the lessons but if you'd like to hear Katie read them she will be in worship at 10 o'clock this morning um, along with the rest of the team that's going on our mission trip to South Seaville. So you can come and hear Katie at 10 o'clock reading first from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 14 through 21. When people saw the sign that he had done, this was the sign of the feeding of the 5,000, when people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the hope of the world. or the letter to the Ephesians. We're reading from chapter 2 today, verses 11 through 22. So then, remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. 
But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in the place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the, through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of the Lord. And as we move more deeply into Ephesians, let's remember that it is grace alone which invites us on this journey. to explore the challenge and the promise of the gospel of the life of Jesus Christ in the world. Last week we learned about grace. Um, we're reminded that it is grace alone which is our hope and which is our salvation and that's a challenge to our egos because we want to be good people, but we can't be on our own. And it's also a promise that we will never be left alone. We will never be without the resources that we need to do the work of God in the world. In chapter two, Ephesians moves into a challenge to division and offers the promise of unity in Jesus Christ. Now the unity that Paul is talking about is not in any way shallow or, super, or superficial. It's not dishonest. It's not partial. It's not conditional the unity that we discover in Jesus Christ, just like everything else, 
that we discover in Jesus Christ is wholehearted, without condition, and supported and bathed in the love of God. It is unity that is focused on and is founded in Jesus Christ. Just like we can't restore ourselves, we can't forgive our own sin, we can't heal our own brokenness, we can't even feed ourselves. The same principle holds true in our relationships. We cannot have deeply satisfying and fruitful and faith-focused relationships with each other outside of the grace of God, outside of God's self-giving love, outside of God's purpose. Genuine fruitfulness, genuine justice and righteousness can only point to Christ because in Christ is the only place that those things are found. We need to remember that lip service is not enough. It's not enough to say, oh, give God the glory and then go on about our own business and go on with our own agenda and at the end of the day say, well, glory to God because things worked out our way. We must be about the business and the agenda of Jesus Christ. That's the way that we give glory to God. It's not in our words, but in our actions and our activity, self-giving activity that is focused on bringing forgiveness and healing on feeding people's needs, on restoring people and relationships, because that's what Jesus does. That's Jesus' business. That's Jesus' agenda. That is the body of Christ doing the work of Christ. And out of that work will grow fruitful relationships, and lasting justice and genuine righteousness. God's one purpose remains the same. That word one repeats and repeats and repeats throughout the letter to the Ephesians, one, 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 because Paul was trying to um, reinforce the point that God's outreach to the world through Jesus Christ included everyone, even the Gentiles. I'm not sure if he was trying to convince himself, perhaps, as much as he was the people who were reading his letters. I'm not sure that there's not some element of trying to convince the Gentiles that they needed to include the Jewish people in their own faith. I'm not sure of the details of what was going on, but the point of this letter is to reinforce the fact that the division between Gentiles and Jews no longer exists in Jesus Christ. And that was a deep, long-standing division, which suddenly, in Christ, no longer is relevant. So Paul had a lot of work to do to convince both the Jews and the Gentiles that we're not called to separate faiths, but that we're called to one faith, in the same Lord. He reminds the Gentile community, he says, once you were aliens, once 
you were strangers to the promise. Once you had no hope. Once you lived without God. The message of Ephesians is that no one, no one is alien to the community when we are in Christ. That's God's purpose, to bring us together, reconciled with each other and with God. It is God's purpose that no one is excluded from the promise that is offered in Christ. No one. It is God's purpose that no one be required to live without hope. And it's God's purpose that no one be prohibited from God's presence. All of those gifts are offered to everyone in Jesus Christ. The gospel that we heard this morning reminds us that it is not possible to manage Christ for our own purposes. The people who had seen Jesus' signs, had seen him feeding and healing and bringing new life, were eager to be a part of the work that he was doing and were eager to have him help them meet their own aim, which was independence from Rome. And so the people, the gospel tells us, were eager to make him their king. They wanted to use him for their own purposes. But Jesus withdrew from that. And Jesus was able to be immediately where he wanted to be without having to get in the boat, without having to wait for the boat to move from one side of the lake to the other. Did you hear that part in the story? When the disciples, at least in John's um, account of the story, when the disciples invited Jesus and asked him and wanted him to come into the boat, then immediately the boat was already where they were intending to go. Jesus will not be managed. Jesus will not be used for any purpose other than Jesus' own purpose. We are all welcome in the boat, but the purpose of Jesus is to reconcile, to heal, to forgive, to feed, and to bring life to each of us and to all of us and will not be managed or leveraged into any other position. So that's where the sermon ends, but that's where our work begins. Take that word one, take that word unity, Take that into your own heart. If there are places where you are out of alignment with that purpose that we all be one in Jesus Christ, ask God to help you there. Ask God to come into your heart and give you God's own heart. If you feel that you are alien to the community of Christ. Remember that you are not alien to Jesus Christ. If you feel that you are removed from the promise in any way, remember it is not Christ who removes you from the promise. And Christ reaches out with that same grace. If you are without hope, there is hope in Christ. 
if you feel that you're not good enough to enter into God's presence, remember, remember God's grace. It's not about how we feel about ourselves, but about how God feels about us and how God has acted in relationship to us to reach out with grace because God is love. No matter how lovable or unlovable we may find ourselves to be, no matter how lovable or unlovable we may find other people to be, God reaches out in one spirit through Jesus Christ to all of us. How will they know in the world that we are Christians? They'll know that we are Christians by our love. <laughs>
um, to the upkeep and the maintenance and the vitality, the continuing vitality of the South Seaville camp. We invite you to join us in the garden at 915 and or in the sanctuary at 10 o'clock. Our mission team will be in worship today at 10 o'clock. We'll be able to greet them and pray for them and pray with them and send them off um, for a week of adventure and a week of blessing um, in, in unexpected ways. Wherever you are, please, please feel free to, to like this video, to share this video, to comment on this video. If you're watching on our YouTube channel, please consider subscribing so that you can keep up to date with our excursion through Ephesus and, and um, our, our exploration of God's word in the letter to the Ephesians. We also invite you and ask that you will consider supporting the ministry of Mount Olivet um, United Methodist Church, whether you're here in person or whether you're someplace far away. And if you're someplace far away, I would so very much love to know where you are. Um, that would be um, that would be a wonderful um, vision of, of God's church in the world. So if you're someplace other than Seaford, share where you are. That would be wonderful to know. But at any rate, we are in Seaford. Um, our website, if you'd like to make a donation and find out more about uh, this congregation of the United Methodist Church, this community of Christ. Um, you, our website is www.mountolivetseaford.org. Uh, you can make a donation there and, and find out what's going on. If you'd like to send a donation, our address is 315 High Street, Seaford, Delaware, 19973. And best of all, bring your donation and come in person and join us in worship. There is one body and one spirit. We are all called to one glorious hope in the church's one foundation, who is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.